Hi, Chicken Bone John here in my workshop and I'm just going to go through the basic steps of putting together a simple three string cigar box guitar neck. Here's one I've made earlier which is in progress. It's made from, this is cherry wood with a black walnut fretboard, that doesn't really matter uh, what wood we're using, but the basic stock that I've used is uh, 30 six millimeters wide, 35 millimeters wide, and 22 millimeters thick. Now onto that I've glued another section which is going to run through my guitar body and that's another piece of 22 millimeters. So the total thickness here at the heel is going to be 44 millimeters or thereabouts. The reason for that is because we are not here to go through our box but also more importantly here we are going to be notching it for a pickup and a pickup typically uh, will cut in here you know, 12 or 20 millimeters basically through the depth of the main neck. Another important thing is the positioning of what, the, what I call this back strap, this piece that runs along the back is getting a good overlap here between where you are notching it for the body and where it runs out as a heel. This is the bare bones. This is a piece of uh, poplar, yellow poplar. I've done the initial headstock cut on the bandsaw, but that can do, but just don't be done with the handsaw. I've marked where it's going to go through my box and just drawn down here. I'm going to be taking out about a quarter of an inch, about six millimeters out of the top of that, which leaves me with about 18 millimeters, about just over half an inch. And then I'm glue, going to glue in, in this case, glue on, sorry, um, a piece of cherry wood. And that's going to go, what I, it's a, what I call a back strap, and that's going to go all the way through the box from the tail piece, and then it will form this heel where it comes out of the box here. That's this is this is one this is the box and it's going to fit in. Oops, sorry, it's going to be fitting in. Can't really see that very well. Let's do that again. That's that's where it's hitting the box anyway. I'll put it on the bench. You can see a bit more what I'm doing. So we're going to glue these two pieces together. These are the same width. Um, to be honest, I find it a little bit easier if you've got one piece a wee bit wider than the other, like the back strap, because otherwise it means your gluing up has to be absolutely bang on accurate. Okay, here we are. I'm just working on the top of this cast iron uh, bandsaw top, this bandsaw table. It gives me a nice stable platform, but any decent working bench will do. What we've got here is a poplar neck blank, and I've already got the headstock. Um, trimmed, oops here we go, for my uh, machine heads but otherwise that's a piece of 35 by 24 timber. I tend to use 35 by 24 millimeters or 32 by uh, 30, 35 by 22 and also what I've got here is a piece of contrasting cherry wood to do what I call the back strap. This is the thing that's going to reinforce this and then I'm going to have a cherry wood fretboard. Now I've already marked where I need my neck to join the body. So I've got a pencil mark here and I'm just going to extend that over so that when I'm cutting it, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to think, uh, I, I want it to say two or three millimeters above the, the, the height of the top and then the thickness of the top. So I'm going to mark in, and I'm not going to use a depth gauge, I'm just going to use my pencil and then I can actually mark that all the way around so that when I come to cutting it I can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's all marked up, ready to go. What this means is when I've got the joint here I've got an overlap We've got about an inch and a, about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter overlap between these two timbers. 
so that, well, that when this is cut they've still got the continuity of this strength and also when we cut here or, or here or whatever for our pickup which is likely to be about 10 or 12 mil, half an inch we've still got sufficient strength in here to make sure the neck isn't going to bend or hinge at that point so this is all plain timber so if you buy a kit or a part of uh, lo loose timber from me to make a, a neck kit it'll all be planed to size and the important thing these glue surfaces are planed nice and true it's a little bit easier if this your back strap piece is a bit wider uh, than your neck because then you can sand or plane it to uh, so, so that it, 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 uh, you get a nice smooth finish. So using timber exactly the same size you've got to be very careful about gluing these together so that they don't slip. Two things we're going to work on a flat surface and we're just going to put a couple of pins in here to stop the glue joint slipping. So we're just going to tap in a pin where it's not going to matter, where it's not going to show now drive that in nice and firm. These are veneer pins which are a little bit thinner than panel pins and I'm just going to nip those off so there's just enough a millimetre or two to give a little bit of a bite. Then I'm going to put some glue on here and I'm using tight bond. I'm just going to work a bead along here there's going to be plenty there and then I'm going to spread that with a roller it's just an ordinary paper hanging seam roller now there's plenty of glue on there in fact I would say <coughs> excuse me there's probably a wee bit too much better, bit too, better too much than not enough and as I say we're using tight bond so I'm putting that on the bench so that these are aligning and I'm just going to squeeze them together so my pin's biting together to stop it slipping use your fingers to feel whether that's smooth fingers are not and you can see it's beginning to squeeze out so what I'm going to do now we're going to clamp it so I'm just going to get some timber scraps to stop that being damaged the other really important thing is we're going to use a C crap, cast iron C or G clamps. These are going to exert sufficient clamping power to close that glue, glue joint properly. Why not, while I'm doing that, I'm feeling to make sure that that glue joint is not slipping. You can already see it's beginning to squeeze out. Now I know a lot of people like the single handed speed clamps, the steel bar with the uh, sort of like pistol grip sort of thing but I don't think they exert sufficient clamping pressure I'm really not worried about glue squeezing out and starving the joint of glue that ain't going to happen I know there's various theories about this but in practice I find these cast iron clamps is the way to go. So I've only just pinched those up lightly and I'm feeling, you can see it's squeezed out onto the bench there. So once that's in place we're going to tighten them evenly so we reduce the chances of the joint slipping and we get a nice even pressure along the glue line. I'm using three clamps here which is plenty. Two and you risk it bowing a wee bit or you know the glue not being completely squeezed out and there we have it. That's it. You can clean that off with a wet cloth and you've got a nice tight glue joint. So as I say, the key is using those, those C clamps. This is the, the speed clamp sort of thing. They're great handy tools, but not for clamping up um, a structural joint. These are fine for just fixing packing blocks and doing light tasks or holding something in place. But 
you really need your proper C clamp. Okay, that's my tips for getting a perfect glue joint on your neck. Uh, remember, you need your timber pre planed. Make sure it's thick enough. As I say, this is uh, two pieces of 22mm glued up here. Make sure you've got a good overlap. This is on the short side, but it's, I've got a, a, still got an inch and a half overlap so that you can see the thickness here continues. And remember where you notch your pickup out, you're going to take a good 12 millimeters. It's going to leave the bottom thickness of this. You're going to be cutting through virtually through the neck to clear something quite deep like a strap pickup. So this is what gives you your neck its strength. I like to set my necks so that they are sticking up a wee bit from the top of the box. That gives me a nice height here for my for my bridge setup. But yeah, there you go. If you if you have a look at that, you'll see it's very difficult to spot the glue line. And even if we sort of it looks like a continuous piece of timber. You can just I think you can just see the glue you can just see the joint, but you can't see an actual glue line. That should be as thin as you can get it. And as I say, the way you do it is using a decent cast iron clamp. These things as I say, they're these great these one-handed speed speed clamps, but really they're not they're not going to exert I'm, I'm clamping my finger in there and it's, it's only just beginning to hurt. They don't really exert enough pressure. So there you go. Um, prep your timber, right thickness, couple of pins in here. Some people say they put salt or sand into the joint. I don't like the idea of that, introducing things, something foreign that could contaminate the glue. Couple of pins driven in or you can use uh, staples and nip them off with a pair of cutters. Spread the glue nice and evenly, not too much glue. The amount I put on there was about the minimum you'll get away with, but don't overload it because it'll just squeeze out and you'll have to clean it off and it's gonna be, gonna be wasteful. And then when you're done, clean up your workbench. Okay, bye for now.